for the last and final time, go back from whence you came. Time to put my amateur lock picking skill to the test. Got it. What? Again? I thought I... I just went outside. I have to activate the flashlight. There's no way I'm in the same library I was in earlier, right? This room's massive. their sentience but lose all mobility, their spirits are torn from their bodies, with the latter being cast away. The librarian takes these spirits and compresses them. That's right, these tomes you've seen lining this place, those books you ignored. Many of them were once like you, poor fools lost in a foreign place. Then there are the husks, shambling bodies that move without direction through the library's infinite halls searching for heads that have long since been taken from them. Are their souls still here, locked away in some dark, forgotten keep? Potentially, but they will search fruitlessly and forever. These fates are equally terrible, forever trapped in place, forever cursed to wander. But there is one worse than both, especially prominent failures. Those that attract the librarian's knowledge but fail in the end are given especially poignant punishments. Some say that in the library's deepest depths, the walls shudder and shake and pulsate with life that should have died long ago. And some say that these walls are formed of the promising few who could not prove themselves. Is there any egress from this place, in death or otherwise? Perhaps, perhaps not, but I'll certainly never see it. one of the unfortunate souls got trapped here. This is all... What, what is this place? And then we've got a trap door here. going on? Why am I back here? Like a beetle in an antlion's trap, you flail your way deeper. It is gratifying to watch you wriggle your way to your doom. We so rarely have new visitors. Perhaps we won't spatter you across these walls. Perhaps we'll allow you to stay, join the others. It is what you want. Is it not? Is it really what I want? I don't know what this is, but it sure doesn't look safe. Made it to this room, and I'm not going any further. Caught a glimpse of him. Bastard that's been talking in my ear. Was wearing a dark cloak, so I couldn't see much more than his figure. Shape of his head wasn't human. Makes sense. Can't stop capitalizing his name. Psychosomatic? Or did he do something to me? No, I won't be able to stay here forever. No, he's waiting for me, just a little beyond the door on the other side of this room. <laughs> Looks like I've got a date with this crevice. Anything's preferable to what I think he's got in mind for me. If you're reading this, you should probably join me down here. Whatever's ahead won't be pretty. V. Alright, bye V. Sucks to be you, I guess. You wouldn't even be here had you not been so 
damn curious. Only caught a letter from a friend and then woke up here, yeah? Nothing you did? I know better. You've searched for the library at home, actively tried to be ensconced by the pull of black knowledge in forgotten places on the internet in the dusty cabinets of the world. You were looking for something. We both know why. It was all because of that letter. But it isn't just guilt that moves you, is it? It's that hungry feeling. That desperate wish to know all there is before the grave wraps its gnarled hands around your leg and pulls. Though mine has been lost to the ages, I can sense your heart beating. In fact, everything in and around the library can. Poor stupid bastard. If you recognized what forces you've caught the attention of, I think you'd go the way the one before you did. So there's no door here. That's impossible. I'm sure there was a door here. There was. There no longer is. And here's a puzzle. This is an interesting little puzzle. Something about this room is unnatural. I don't like it at all. Okay, first we're gonna collect the tapes. Or the tablets, sorry. That's what they are. I can find all of them. Should be able to. And there's a tablet there. That might be all of them. No, that's not all of them. There's one more. We'll get to it. He was only a child, left alone for too long, as children are wont to do. He went off in the high, grassy hills above the apartment complex he called home. Tall grass came almost to his chin, tickling his nose when he stepped forward. The freedom normally kept him normally kept from him was finally his, and it was magical in its way. So deeply enthralled with the hills, the grass, the view of town was he that he did not think to listen for the rustling of grass. When the snake's fangs sank into his young flesh they met no resistance. His body was found days later huddled in a ball. Well, that's unfortunate. Is that abstract art? Probably not. In her middle age, she had little to do, and so gained a fascination with the old radio in her attic. It was a relic from her childhood, and it had never worked properly. As she waned in the seclusion of her home, a desire to see working again overtook her. Her curiosity matching her seclusive nature in equal parts, she plumbed knowledge in the dark recesses of her attic, building capacitors and vacuum tubes, twisting metal and wires. In the end, the radio sang. It was more than a radio should have been. Flames spouted from speakers, from wires, from the shattered glass tubes. The fire ate up everything it touched. She was reduced to a blackened skeleton. He was old as sin, perhaps older, and had lived alone for a long time. Over his many years he had accumulated much, wealth, knowledge, fond memories, but nothing to stop the onset of time. As he walked the dark halls of his mansion, as he paced in the dark, as he worried away his time in his study, time continued along, tearing at his flesh, bending his brittle bones. The hands of the clock peeled his organs away from his body, one by one, until his waning strength finally failed him. He was found slumped in his chair, surrounded by books bearing unidentifiable sigils. In the end, even they had not saved him. Aha! There we go. He was sixteen when he went driving alone for the first time. His family had kept him from the world, he said and it was more than high time that he went and learned about what was out there. It was less than an hour before he was lost. He hadn't received his license yet, after all, and there were many winding side streets surrounding the small town he called home. It was on a lightless intersection where he met his fate. A pickup hit his sedan without stopping. As his vehicle spun out and rolled into a ditch, the pickup vanished into the night. His head was pulverized by the steering column, turned it to little more than paste. completely dark. Okay, I have everything. 
but I haven't read everything. Except that it's completely dark now. I know there's more. Okay, I have all the tablets, so I guess I'm not allowed to read anymore. Wait, no, there was a... No. Okay, let's do this. Snake. Um, car. Bear. Fire. Clock. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get to read the bear. But the safe contains a lump of blackened flesh. to even be surprised anymore. The dark comes crushing down. It swallows you whole. Swallows you whole. You piqued our curiosity. We read your book. Discovered that, for a mortal, you're rather... unique. In the same way that a human might consider a primate, you almost remind us of ourselves. Though, of course, we'd never stoop to your level. Oh god, the lights go dim, one by one. So now we go in here. Christ, maybe it'd be safer not to move on at all. Um, there's a way to go in here. There we go. So we go down this long corridor. That thing in the safe, I think I recognized it. Get out! Get out! Can't you find your way out? Something is blocking me from getting to that door. So then we go back this way. Thank god, I'm finally back where I entered. Time to get the hell out of here. Need to find the right key. Fuck. 